Today we are going to be streaming a bit more Decapo 2. So let's hop to it. Uh, yeah, that's right. So last time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Last time Yume was making lunch and uh, she cut her finger. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we ended up uh, taking her finger into our mouth to disinfect it, and it caused a whole bunch of shenanigans. <laughs> so this time we're picking up from there. After we managed to clear up all the complications, we somehow finished making lunch. The sight spread out before my eyes was indeed majestic. <laughs> Gratin. Ah, oh, so that's supposed to be Gratin. And that's, uh, overcooked macaroni and a bunch of burnt cheese? I guess the stuff buried under that cheese is paprika. For some reason, all this stuff is reminding me of Picasso's Guern Guernica. I don't know anything <laughs> about that kind of stuff. So. Otone, are you saying we should eat this work of art? She said it in a gentle tone, not being her usual energetic self. Don't tell me not to eat it if you're going to look at me like that. And your fingers are all bandaged up, too. You certainly did give it your all. I guess I'll just go along with Otone. It, it'll be fun. I won't die just from taking a bite. Feeling like I was about to bungee from the Tokyo Tower into a river or something, I took a bite of the macaroni. No. Yume looked at my mouth, her face filled with expectation. Ah. Uh huh? Huh? Man, this is pretty good. It doesn't look like much, but the taste is fine. Um, um, um. I'm not really complimenting it. I'm just saying that it looks way worse than it tastes. What a flatterer there, Yoshiyuki. <laughs> well, it's a bit washed out, but you really put in a good effort. When I first saw this atrocious food, I thought I was going to collapse the mom moment I tasted it. Yep, this tastes good. Hey, what's up? You've been spacing out for a while now. Flustered, she huffed and turned her face away. She was so weird, even when, even when I finally praised her and everything. Hmm? For some reason, her face was a bit red. Was she feeling embarrassed? <laughs> Acting all flustered, she spit that out. I guess this was Yume's uh, way of masking her embarrassment. Oh well, that's okay. Well, even if it wasn't for me, it's still tasty. Sorry for teasing you earlier. I knew she did her best cooking this. I was rude, and I had to apologize. I bowed my head to Yume. Her face still red, she took a few bites of the gratin. <laughs> Ultimate laughed in delight at the situation. Not really. Early afternoon at the end of the year. Time leisurely flowed by. Nah, I'm fine. I knew what Yume was trying to do. She was trying to lure me away from my spot in the living room, the warmest spot, and also the best spot for watching TV. If I left this spot for even a second, I was going to lose it. And that was why I decided I wasn't going to move an inch. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, my body was undergoing undergoing an unfavorable reaction. Urgh, I really don't want to give up the spot, but if I try to endure this, I'm going to spring a leak. I've got to go to the bathroom. But that's my spot, you better not steal it, you hear? Taking advantage of me while I'm getting up, huh? 
Whoever came up with that must have done it as a total favor for someone like Yume. Let's see... Orange juice, was it? Huh? We've got visitors? I closed the fridge and walked over to the front door. I'm coming! Who might it... Huh? Mm -hmm. Amakaze was waiting outside the door, standing around lo and looking like she'd, uh, ab been abandoned like a stray cat or something. Oh, Amakaze, you don't come by that often, do you? She said as she snapped her tongue at me. Well, she was certainly acting her age, as usual. So, what you want? Huh? Yume? Ah, so da. Yeah, you may see her all right. Discuss what? And robots. A secret discussion between girls, huh? And on top of that, be uh, between Amakaze and Yume, I became rather curious as to what this secret discussion was about though I honestly had no idea. Ah well, it should be fine. Yume's inside, so just come on in. I showed Amakaze into the house. What? You want to stay over at your boyfriend's and you want us to forge you an alibi? Yeah, are you saying I'm wrong? You may preach to me in all sincerity. So, now that we had a visitor, she was in her friendly mode, huh? You little hypocrite. No, nothing at all. I shook my head in denial as you may glare at me. You're going camping with your boyfriend after all, huh? Amakaze suddenly got up, her shoulders shaking. Now, now, don't be upset, Amakaze. I'm sure I can give you some excellent advice. She looked at me with a doubtful expression on her face. Yeah, just listen up. Yeah, yeah, look here. There's absolutely absolutely no point in asking Yume about the pajama thing. Yeah, just look at what she's wearing, right? My vision was blurry from taking a blow straight to the head. Yume looked at me, smiling, her head slightly, slightly tilted. A as you wish. Aww. Amakaze was just sitting there, looking really confused. Yume's fist had traveled at the speed of light. Not even a robot would have, uh, <laughs> not even a robot would have been able to see that coming. My little sister was terrified. My dear little sister, please don't say that like it's a natural thing. I know her real motive was to make me carry their stuff, but she was going to try to make me bend to, their, bend to her wishes. I was finally enjoying myself slacking around, so why did I have to go out in this cold weather? Sorry, but I've got plans. I've got plans until midnight or so, so you'll have to go without me. There's a special New Year's broadcast, and the president of the U.S. will be giving a speech to fit every, uh, doing the speech to fit into everyone's busy schedule, and... You may completely ignore me, and went off to get ready to go outside. And we're dragged. I ended up going shopping with Yume and Amakasi anyway. And we arrived at some store that specialized in women's clothing, but... I thought we were, get we were getting there, but shopping with two girls takes time, huh? 
just when I think they've decided on something, some other completely different distraction popped up. Couldn't they just pick something out and be done with it? I felt anxious. Oh, Akane, Anzu. That's a scary thought. Even scarier. Hey, hold on. This has no attachment to what's going on. How can they decide on this stuff so easily? Wait just a minute. Don't go declaring what's fact all on your own. What kind of witch trial reasoning was that? I'm just here carrying stuff for Yume and Amakase. Something like that. Are you guys also going? Akane said it in a, a cheerful fashion while smiling broadly. I recalled how they said they were going on uh, to a ski resort over New Year's, and I was a bit jealous. Akane, are you really fine with those small things? They can't be keeping. Uh, can't be keeping any cold out at all. Is that really okay? It looked like, uh, like Yume and Amakaze hadn't picked anything out yet. Yume is... Ah, over there. Hey, Yume, where's Amakaze? Yume didn't seem to have noticed me, and she was examining one particular pair of pajamas. Yume! Can you hear me? What are you looking at? Yume was looking at a pair of pajamas with a simple yet cute design. Oh, pajamas, huh? Nah, I was just thinking that they'd look good on you, Yume. She got all flustered and hurriedly picked up the first jersey she, she could find. Yume ran off towards Amakaze, as if she was running away. So, she just like a jersey or something, huh? If that was true, she wouldn't have been inspecting that so seriously. I imagine Yume wearing pajamas in front of me. Yeah, not bad. Really, it'd look even cuter than that jersey. Ah oh, well, can't be helped. I checked my wallet and looked at the price tag. Well, it looked like I had enough money for it. Couldn't hurt, I guess. It was New Year's, after all. Excuse me, I'd like to buy this. I grabbed one of the nearby employees. Yume! The three of them walked off, their shoulders lined up with one another. Skiing, huh? Darn, that sounds like fun. I wish I could have gone too. So? That did sound like Yume's ideal situation. She said, and sped up her walking pace. Ah, hey. Hey, wait up! 
Don't be in such a hurry. I want to give you something before we get back home. Here, I bought this earlier. Having said that, I handed over the pajamas I bought for her earlier. Well, I figured it couldn't hurt. You know, giving your little sister a present once in a while. She mumbled before peering into her bag. Yume was spacing out with an amazed expression, expression on her face. And then she looked at me. Nah, I just... Well, you seem to be staring at them, so... That end, like I said, I thought they'd look good on you. You know, if you get a boyfriend, you can't just walk around in a jersey, can you? That's why, as your older brother, I've... She hailed onto her bag like it was the most important thing in the world. Well, if you don't want it, I won't force you to. That being said, she spun around and sped up her pace again. Hey, Yume, wait for me. Yume's footsteps moved further and further away from me. Looking at her back, for some reason, it seemed as if she was about to start skipping happily. Can't imagine why. For our next report, around 3 p.m. today, 20 male restaurant employees in the main shopping district fell unconscious and had been brought to a hospital. I don't know why the newscaster is sort of sounding like Sean Connery, by the way, like more and more. Uh, but so it is. After arriving at the hospital, they regained consciousness without incident. The doctor's examination revealed no abnormalities, and the cause is believed to be stress and overwork. As we enter the Shimba, the number of people who suddenly faint and have, uh, have to be brought to a hospital is increasing. We may... Uh, I can't read. We know that the end of the year is hectic, but please, everyone, don't push ourselves too hard. We were all seated around the dining table, idly listening to the TV news. I really don't want you telling me that. Delicate? There's nothing delicate about being lazy as you are. Never mind. That said, I think Altine should be the most careful, really. You're so serious and punctual that you're the perfect candidate for it, you know? You're always kind of pushing it too, uh, a bit too hard, right? She was shaking her head in denial. In her case, the worst part was probably that she didn't realize that she was overdoing it. Let's see... Uh, let's see what happens when you collapse, yeah? Yeah. By pure chance, Yume and I had the exact same reaction. I could see Yume wanting to bear her fangs at the thought of having to deal with the cri uh, criticism. Even though I saw her glare like that, I never thought it would turn out like this. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Yume. I accidentally turned our fun time together into a sermon hailed by Ultone. So it goes. I let out a big yawn as I put the manga I was reading down onto the bed. Maybe I should get some sleep. Looking at the clock, it was a bit past midnight. Hmm, what should I do? Um... Uh, let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> ah, what a relief! On my way back from the, uh, back to my room, hmm? I noticed that the door to Yume's room was open. I could see a stream of light shining out through the crack. What's Yume doing up at this hour? 
I carefully looked into the room so that Yume wouldn't notice me. <laughs> Are those the pajamas I bought for her earlier, earlier today? Yume was holding the pajamas to her chest while turning around and looking her at herself in the big mirror. <laughs> She's being weird. Incredibly weird. Yume carefully folded the pajamas and took great care when she placed them back in the bag. But then suddenly, she took them out of the bag again and went about her private fashion show. She even tilted her head a bit like she was in some kind of, or like she was some kind of model. I had heard of people doing some eccentric things when alone in their room, but I had no idea there was weird stuff like this going on in my house. Uh, they walls have ears. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be the walls have ears and the doors have eyes. I needed to remind her that you never know who might be watching. You may fold the pajamas again and once more put them back into her bag. Hey, you may. If you're going to do a fashion show on your own, shouldn't you at least put uh, the clothes on? <laughs> Yume jerked her shoulders in surprise and sprung to her feet. Yume's eyes bulged out of their sockets, and she slowly, slowly turned around to face me. Ever since you held that thing to your chest and smiled like crazy. Yume's face turned red as a boiled lobster. Well, that was certainly an interesting show. Were you really that happy about it? Wouldn't putting it on be a better way to check that than holding up, holding it up and smiling at the mirror? Privacy? Your door was open. I just happened to take a look. I'm one lucky big brother. I never thought you'd be that happy. I won't be able to forget your smile for quite a while, you know. Yume was getting pissed. She started picking up nearby things and throwing them at me. Whoa, hey, stop that! Don't throw stuff at me, calm down! Books, magazines, pillows, cushions, she threw everything she could find at me. Not wanting to become a victim of Yume's berserker rage, I fled her room as fast as I could. <sighs> that was scary. I never thought she'd get that pissed off. I guess maybe I teased her a bit too much. Oh well, whatever. I was just glad she liked it. And Junichi... Junichi was the main character in Decapo 1, uh, and he is Yume and Otane's grandpa. When Junichi-san opened his clenched hand, a manju had appeared in it. I don't want your manju, Junichi. I put the manju Junichi-san had given me into my mouth. It's tasty. Though I guess he's a kid, so it's tasty. Junichi-san smiled. Uh, as he gently said that to me. He patted me on the shoulder. But... Could I really get that girl to smile for me? I'd already tried it so many times. But she always looked so lonely, and never said anything. Always on her own. Thinking about that, I couldn't really smile. Magic trick? It's called tickling. Junichi uh, sounded full of confidence when he said that. If that's true, then I'd really like to learn it, I thought. But is there really magic like that? 
Really, it'll make anyone smile for sure. As he said that, he let out a big laugh. And now it is December 31st. Rolling around in my bed, feeling at ease, just relaxing. This is what I live for. Ah, such bliss. A bed that's just the right temperature is such an indescribable feeling. And with that, the cool air up on my head even feel, uh, feels even better. This is true happiness. Not many people know of this. Hmm. Did someone enter my room? No, I can't wake up yet. I will not relinquish this pleasure. I buried my face in my pillow and pretended to sleep. She said, ruthlessly, and prepared to yank away my blanket. You may, I beg you, just let me sleep for five more minutes. I'll just heat it in the microwave then. Such are the advances of modern civilization. <sighs> As she said that, she heartlessly grabbed my futon and yanked it out from underneath me. Robbed of my futon, I vigorously headed straight for the floor. Ah! Having lost the safety of my bed, my bodily heat quickly dissipated. You cold-hearted person. What kind of inhuman beast are you anyway? And then I noticed that Yume was wearing something different from usual. Oh. I just noticed that you're wear uh, noticed that you're wearing the pajamas I bought bought you. Yeah. See? I told you they look good on you. As she said that, she blushed slightly. Her mouth seemed more relaxed as well. It was kind of like she was expressing her happiness, and I felt good about giving her that present too. There, now you can get a boyfriend without having to worry. Jerseys don't really show off any interest in the opposite sex, huh? Yep, yep, Onisan must feel very relieved now. Wait, what's with that annoyed look? Yume was happy just a moment ago, but she suddenly started frowning. Yume pouted and left the room. What now? As usual, I really didn't get her. Did I say something to make her angry? Derp Jun- uh, I was about to call him Junichi. Uh, Yoshiyuki, that's your name. Another laid-back holiday morning. So I say, but since yesterday, it's actually been getting more, uh, getting a bit boring doing nothing. Oh yeah, today's New Year's Eve. The last day of the year arrived a lot faster than I expected. Maybe I should try to do something useful, since it is the last day. At least, that's what I thought. Hmm. I was pretty sure Ultane was going to buy ingredients for the New Year's food, and Yume was probably hanging around in the living room. Maybe I should try to get Yume to help me with cleaning, uh, cleaning up for this evening. So, what should I do? Naturally, we're going to do the cleaning with Yume. Alright, it's decided. I'll go drag Yume off the floor and get some New Year's cleaning done. Alright, maybe we'll have to buy some cleaning stuff first. Hey, Yume! Yume was sitting under the kotatsu and didn't even turn her head to look at me. Yume, are you listening? I'm talking to you. As usual, she didn't move a muscle. I guess she just doesn't want to take her eyes off what, uh, whatever she's watching. Hey Yume, I know the TV show is fun, but could you pay attention to me for a bit? Hey, when having a conversation, you should look at the person talking to you. A school student knows that. Even though she looked like a girl and dressed like a girl, I guess whoever created her didn't think it was worth getting her to act like a girl. Ouch. <laughs> this is where I had to steal my bleeding heart and show her the true way of mankind. 
Click. I grab the remote control and mercilessly turn the TV off. Now look at me, young lady. As your big brother, there is something I must tell you. Ah, hold on. You may snatch the remote away from me and quickly turn the TV back on. We're not done talking yet. Hand that over. You may kept watching the TV while holding the remote in her hand and dodging my attempts to take it back. I'm just going to talk for like 30 minutes. Give that back to me. I'm like, why is it going to take you 30 minutes to say that you want to go shopping? Her movements were too quick, and I had no way of taking it back. Urgh. How could she be, be so fast when she... See, she blah, 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 I can't talk. How can she be so fast when she's usually so lazy? She's dodging all my attacks, even though she's sitting under the kotatsu. Well, I still have the upper hand. I slowly got up, walked over to the TV, and defeated it by pressing the power switch. You may press the power button on the remote over and over, but nothing happened. Forgive me, Yume. I never wished for it to come to this. Yume sighed and turned to face me. In olden days, people said that the clothes a man wears are connected to the feelings in his heart. Even though she was wearing feminine pajamas, Yume was still being Yume. She was still as incredibly lazy as ever. I guess neither pajamas nor a jersey could change the way Yume was. Yume, do you know what today to, uh, what day today is? That's correct. But do you know what else we do that's even more important? Today is the day where we exercise all the dirt that we've gathered up during the past year. No, that's no good at all. Of course not. But if we just leave it today, I'll probably never be able to do a big cleanup again. You should be familiar with how much I hate cleaning by now, right? Ouch. It was a great shock for me to hear that. I mean, considering the person who said it to me. Anyways, I'm completely resolved to do the New Year's cleaning today. Today, I refuse to be lazy like you. This is the chance to clean up, uh, clean up that I've been waiting for this entire year. I feel the same way. So you should put some energy into it. Go get changed and... Yeah. An immediate reply. Uh, what? She really didn't offer me any explanation as to why. I had no idea what she was trying to say. She crossed her arms in order to show her resolve not to change her clothes. I'm just wasting my time here. Well, we were finally on vacation from school, so it wasn't like I didn't know how she felt. In fact, I'd really have liked to do something... Or, yeah, I'd really have liked to do the same thing myself. Oh well, can't be helped. I'll head out alone then. I stopped trying to persuade women. Yeah, man. Hang on, let me take a drink. I'm getting tongue-tied like crazy. Revived. I stopped trying to persuade Yume and stood up. To the shopping district. I need to buy some cleaning supplies. I figured I'd buy some snacks while I'm at it too. Since I don't do this very often, I thought I might bring you along. But since you won't change your mind, I'm counting on you to watch the house while I'm out. As I was about to leave, as I was about to leave, Yume called out to me. Yeah. Yes, that's what I just said. Alternate? She seemed to be really busy, so I didn't ask her. 
Why are you asking anyway? She put her index finger to her lips and looked like she was thinking about something. She clapped her hands together and... That was what she suddenly said. Having said that, she ran off towards the guest room. Weird. She was so opposed to changing her, changing her clothes just a moment ago. She sure changed her mind real fast. Um, what on earth is going on here anyway? Why did she change her attitude when she said, uh, when I said I was going shopping? Geez, I guess there's something in it for her somehow. Yeah, well, whatever. It is pretty lonely to go shopping on your own, and now everything is going according to plan. I absentmindedly waited for Yume to finish changing. Ultimate looked fired up as she declared that. Yume sighed, looking like this was the worst thing ever. Well, it's not like I didn't know how she felt. I'm pretty sure you did some of it. You've been coming over for meals for like six months now, haven't you? Ultane was now in student council president mode. While in this mode, Ultane was more dangerous than usual. Yes! If you let your guard down for just a bit, that's what would happen. わざわざ雑巾かけするの? After we finished cleaning the living room, we moved down to the kitchen. Ultane quickly assigned us tasks. I was getting a bit used to this work by now. Even if I tried to refuse, she'd just skillfully persuade me to help out anyway. It's not that I didn't like it, I thought it was pretty amazing of, uh, of Ultane. Okay, I'll take the dinnerware out of the cupboard then. You dummy. If my hand slipped, I'd end up breaking all of the plates. She thoughtlessly said, Aren't your plates in there? I'm pretty sure the ones you like. Why, you little. Cleaning fight. Student Council President Ultane was very strict. Ah, you're even cleaning the kitchen ventilation fan. Sorry about that. Ah, will do. I took the fan component that Ultane handed over to me. I knew this thing was part of my house, but it looked like it had been swimming around in the sea of oil or something. I should probably clean it a bit more often after this. Lucky, please You may happily exclaimed as she looked in the fridge, the refrigerator. Hey, you! That one's mine, so put it back where it was. Yeah, she laughed evilly and took the pudding out of the fridge. 
Don't just make up your own rules. Come on, put it back. No, that's not the problem. It's that Yume selfishly stole my... That's precisely why we can't forgive this display of violent behavior. Yume skipped up to me, smiling with her entire face, and opened the lid of the pudding cup. The smell of caramel sauce reached my nostrils. I watched in a daze as she sent her spoon down into the de delicious softness and scooped it up. Hey you, are you going to eat that in front of me? You've got a heart of stone! Since both my hands were occupied, I could do nothing to stop Yume. As she said that, she hailed out a spoonful of pudding in front of me. What are you doing? Ah, no wait, I'll eat it! You may said it herself and put the spoon, uh, spoonful of pudding in my mouth. The rich flavor of eggs and milk spread inside my mouth. You may sama, please let me have another bite, and please make it one with a lot of caramel sauce. I won't get fat off a tiny bit, a uh, tiny bite like that. Please, one more bite. Yume looked proud, like she had she had me beaten, and handed me another spoonful. Huh. I guess Yume isn't cold-hearted all the time. That pudding was mine to begin with, though. Almost certain of how I felt, she scooped up some of the pudding and put it in her mouth. She clapped her mouth shut over the spoon and looked incredibly happy. She sounded completely overjoyed. She then took another spoonful and ate it. Hey, Yume. I just thought about it. Uh, are you really fine with that? Well, isn't that like an indirect kiss? Of course they'd bring that up. Yeah, I guess. Since we're siblings, there wasn't any special feelings like that. But, in that case, why was Yume's face starting to turn red? And she was looking really embarrassed. Yume's face turned bright red, and she suddenly turned away from me and left the kitchen. My face was feeling a bit hot as well. <laughs> Alternate laughed like she was having lots of fun. Oh, I actually kind of remember this scene. So, we're finally at the end, huh? It felt like the big cleanup had taken an eternity, but it was almost over. Wait, what? No, let's not do that. I can clean my own room just fine. I'll do it properly, I promise. Yep, it's no problem at all. I was waving my arms, trying to stop Ultinae's plans as politely as I could. She gave me a confu confused look. No, that's... uh. In a man's room, there are lots of secret items, but I couldn't say that to Ultinae. And then you said it? What the heck? Nope, nope, nope. Not a single thing. Why would there be? <laughs> you may let out an unpleasant little chuckle. I, uh, uh, no, I really should clean my own room. It's only right. Altonis said that with a 100% pure smile on her face. You may said that with a 100% evil smile on her face. You little. These two sisters are so alike, except completely different. Crap. If it's come to this, I'll just have to make sure that they don't find that. If Ultane were to find it, just the thought of it was making me break out into a cold sweat. Nope, this place is fine. I'll take care of it, yep. I was standing in front of the bed in order to avert Ultane's attention from it. This is where I make my last stand. 
さっきから全然お掃除進んでないじゃない I'll do it later. It's fine. どうして後でなのかな今一緒にやっちゃえばいいじゃない It should be clear as to why, but Ultane just looked confused. And that was specifically why I could not allow her to clean the specific spot. Hey! What are you saying, my dear younger sister? Why would I ever keep something like that around? Maybe all the New Year's laz laziness has affected your brain! Without remorse, you may utter those words. ちゃんとベッドの下も掃除しないとね。ほこりとか溜まってるはずだし、きっといろんなゴミが出てくるよ。You may tilt at her head, a devilish smile on her face. Ah, please forgive me. My life is going to. うん、そうだね。やっぱりどいて、弟くん。Agreeing with what you made said, she tried to push me away from the bed. Wah, wait, Ultane. I'm pretty sure Ultane isn't strong enough to. Hey, you may let go of me! <laughs> Whoa! Ah! You may suddenly let go, and I lost my balance. Oof. Looking around, I noticed that I'd ended up where Ultane was standing a moment ago. W -w -w Wait just a minute! Panicking, I tried to stop her, but. <laughs> It was already too late. I glanced at Ultane, who was sitting on her knees in front of my bed. Ah! <sighs> Dear God, please save me. Why do you make me undertake such severe trials? <laughs> Holding the washcloth, she stuck her hand under the bed. <laughs> she lightly scolded me for that, and then. Ultane suddenly pulled out my grand collection from under the, underneath the bed. Gradually, the soft, voluptuous forms of my goddesses emerged. <laughs> Ultane twitched and then froze. In fact, the very air inside the room froze. This is the end. As I looked at Ultane's back, I could sense the immense pressure she was emanating. This is bad. <laughs> Uh, no, that's. <laughs> this sucks! I never thought hell on earth existed! Actually, this is slightly worse than hell. I, I don't know. Math, maybe? <laughs> I need to get out of here. But my legs won't move. Bit by bit, my body was starting to tremble. Well, you know, they say that the most deaths while driving occur in the, dri、uh, in the passenger seat, right? That's why it's dangerous and, uh. Yes. Yes, right away. I instantly jumped into the corner and sat down. I didn't care if someone thought I was pathetic. I just wanted to stay alive, that's all. She handed over my grand collection to Yume. Yume looked really bothered. Well, of course she would. Why would she hand over my collection to Yume? Wait, what? All the dreams and hopes of my youth, my beloved treasure, my other half, which was to climb the stairs to, to adulthood with me. No, not at all. I heard Yume run off as fast as she could. Damn her! She ran off on her own to burn it and left me here to face the full wrath of Ultane. Not that I wouldn't have done the same thing. But... Ultane、uh, struck up an intimidating pose as she stood in front of me. She 
She smiled at me at, uh, as she said that. And then, I fell into the depths of hell. That wasn't so bad. Okay. After having been preached to for about an hour, I was exhausted in both body and soul. I obediently took up the cleaning ra rag that was handed to me. A cupboard. Another heavy thing. Never mind. I didn't say anything. It seems like she's going to keep bringing that up, uh, bringing up that porn for the time being. By the way, where is Yume? Is she still slacking off? I didn't know she had a sense of delicacy. Wait, doesn't that just mean that she's slacking off in her room, where we can't see her doing it? Alrighty. Altine smiled innocently as she cracked her shoulders. About four hours had passed since we started cleaning. And we've cleaned two houses. It really was exhausting. I sat down on the sofa and let out a big yawn. Ah, yeah, thanks. It'd be great if you could put some milk in it, too. Having said that, Altine walked off towards the kitchen. I picked up the remote and turned on the TV. It's New Year's Eve and the shopping district is crowded with people doing their holiday shopping. They showed footage of a cra uh, the crowded shopping district on the screen. Looks like everyone everywhere is busy preparing for New Year. The New Year. Hmm? I looked away from the TV for a bit and noticed there were a bunch of books laying on the table. They were really big and heavy. Photo albums? Otsune, what's this? I grabbed one of the photo albums and showed it to Otsune. Ah, so Ah, I see. Is it okay if I look? Once she had decided that, Otsune sat down next to me. I slowly turned the, uh, the pages in the album. Oh! The first thing that caught my eye was a picture of Ultine wearing a shrine festival outfit and having a composed look on her face. And next to her, a miniature Yume. She looked like she'd been crying, crying, but she was smiling broadly. It seems like Yume was a lot more straightforward with her feelings back when she was a kid. I guess even she was docile back then. What, really? I don't understand her? What was that supposed to mean? <laughs> Alternate chuckled as she compared our statures using her fingers. I don't really think that's something you should consider competing with someone in. Flip. As Ultinae turned the page, I noticed a photograph of someone I remembered. It wasn't Yume, nor was it Ultinae. Ultinae mumbled, mumbled it quietly. That's right, it was a picture of Yume and Ultinae's mother, Asakura Yuki-san. She was a kind woman with a gentle smile ever present on her face. In the latter half of the album, there was a bunch of pictures uh, with white walls and ceilings in the background. Those were from the time when she was in the hospital. Of course. I could never forget her. When I was suddenly had to start living with the Asakura family, she took me in without asking any questions. She was always so warm and kind. 
just as if I was part of the family. No, it was more like she has accepted me as part of their family. She was truly impartial when it came to me, Ultane, and Yume. That's why. How could I forget her? Naturally, I couldn't. Ultane's voice sounded really gentle. She took a deep breath. Ultane looked carefully at my face. Promised? A promise, huh? Did I promise Ultane something? I went through my mem memories of when I was young, but I couldn't remember anything like that. She sounded a bit angry. No, wait, I'll remember it if you just give me a little bit of time. I sent my brain into overdrive. It was a really important promise, right? I promised to alternate something. And it was back when I was a kid. Theoretically, it was probably something like, let's get married when I grow up, right? That's the kind of promises kids make. But I didn't really remember promising her that. Crap, I can't remember it, remember it at all. Ultane puffed up her cheeks and made an angry face. I I'm sorry. I reflexively re apologized. Huh? Kidding. Ultane suddenly looked like she had started thinking about something. An important task. Ultane looked a bit flustered and waved her hand in denial. Now for our special news report. Earlier, a fire broke out in a restaurant in the shopping district. We both turned our attention to the TV. The police highly suspect arson, but for the moment, no clues have been found as to a suspect. Furthermore, four similar incidents have occurred this month, and the police are suspecting that all the incidents were started by the same culprit. That's pretty bad. There's been a lot of things like that lately. Ultane looked like she was absorbed by what she was seeing on the TV. Ultane? What's wrong? Ultane seemed to calm down a bit from hearing my voice. Yeah, it seems that way. Geez, there sure are some trou troublesome people around. The day before yesterday, there was that bus thing, and before that, that mugging inc incident. I guess it's not safe around New Year's. Well, that's what it feels like this year, at least. Ultane replied to me, but her mind was off somewhere else. Ultane, what's wrong? Are you feeling sick? Having said that, Ultane got up and walked away. You need to think about something. Ultane smiled, and then she walked off to her room while waving goodbye. Think about something, huh? It seemed like Ultane was acting a bit weird just now. Maybe she was worried about something. Oh well, thinking about it wouldn't do anything. I got up and stretched my body. I figured I had some uh, free time of my own until dinner then. And I am going to cut the stream to break it up for YouTube purposes uh, to make it easier to cut. So uh, I will be right back in just a moment if you're watching this during the stream. And if you're watching this in the YouTube video later, thank you very much for watching and another episode will be coming soon.